Featuring D'Addario's proprietary NY steel wire and our impossibly thin protective coating, XS Electric lets you bend further and play longer with a sound that stays timeless. John Bolger with Premier Guitar. We're in Nashville, Tennessee at the historic Ryman, and I'm with Marcus King. Hey. Marcus, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me back. Man, you are taking over the world, man. Shoot, man, we're just happy to be anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And happy to be playing that guitar. Tell me about that thing. So this is the newest one to the flock, actually. This is a 58 body, uh, replaced neck, and uh, replaced pickups. But she's sweet as apple pie, man. and. Uh, we just put this strap on it, and this I, is, I love yeah. that strap. Who, who makes that? Uh, Luke McClure out of Dallas, Texas makes these straps, and we just got this strap yesterday, and they brought me this guitar yesterday, and uh, <laughs> I just can't put it down, so <laughs> I guess I'm going to take it to Atlanta with me. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I've been hearing you play a lot more Les Falls. At first, it seems like you're on that, that 345 yep. for the most part. And uh, I've been watching lately a lot more on, seems like you're gravitating that way. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, when we did the Youngblood record, me and Dan, I used his 59 oh. Les Paul on the whole record. I used that and uh, this little Gibson amp that I have. Yeah. That was my dad's. And uh, just really tough to beat that sound. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of chasing that, that high, really. Right, Because right. um, uh, I was gonna actually I thought about buying that Les Paul before Dan did, and I ended up getting my first house instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but this is a great guitar, man, and uh, great guitar. I mean, it's 58 body. It's just this thing just sustains for days. So, are the frets? So it looks like it's been updated. They're not those real skinny fretless wonder frets. Yeah, which like is that. interesting that I like it because I really usually like just fretless wonders because I grew up playing all my, my dad and my grandfather's old guitars and none of them had, had a fret job in years. So all of them had just worn down to the nub frets. Yeah. So that's what I'm really used to. Huh. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, well, okay. You're making it around just great on those big frets. Seems like an yeah. easy adjustment. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, I mean, let's, uh, let's look at what's next. You've got a, quite a few. What do you uh, want? I got too many, really, I mean. <laughs> oh, please. If I could, yeah, well, you can never have too many, but I reckon, uh, let's go back to the start. Let's get uh, Big Red over here. And this is the original 345. That was my granddad's. Um, this is the one that we modeled my signature model after. That's great. This is your tech, Cody. This Cody. is Cody Ray Bates, y'all. Cody, thanks. <laughs> He's a Nashville man, and ladies, he's eligible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, again, this is a Luke McClure strap, and uh, that's how I actually got introduced to the fella, because there's a great old photo of my granddad playing this guitar. He's actually got his guitar and his fiddle on him, and uh, I think a mandolin, too, in the photo, and a great cowboy hat on. And uh, he had on a strap just like this that Bill King on it. Oh, really? And Luke saw that photo and uh, made me a strap just off of that grainy little photo and just nailed it. God. And um, that's, that's how I got introduced great, to it. That's great, man. How cool. Yeah. But this guitar my dad gave me when I was 18. I was getting ready to go up to New York City. So I reckon he thought I needed some kind of uh, a guardian angel with me. And <laughs> this guitar is definitely a guardian angel so let's see so it's a little weird i don't have my stereo cable out right now so oh that's we're right we're just gonna do it one pickup at a time Bye. <laughs> 
my grandfather always said, you can't make this guitar sound small. <laughs> it's just, just nothing about this guitar, man, is, you know, wrong. It's, oh, it's right. A, it's a Cadillac. And uh, I just love the wear on it. Well, it seems like, okay, y'all have to watch his first rig rundown from four years ago or something like that. Yeah, maybe even more longer yeah. now. Eh? I swear that was not that worn back then. So this, back then I was playing uh, one that uh, the kind folks at Gibson were. Oh, well that explains they, it. They were nice <laughs> enough to give me one on loan. Oh, great. To take out on the road, because I started getting a little weary about taking this out. Yeah. And, you know, it's only out right now because we're at home here in Nashville, and I just feel safe bringing her out. But, yeah. Um, this That's guitar great. just means the world to me. And God, it sounds great. And it's all all original, pretty much, right? Yeah, this is all original. So my grandfather at one point had put a stop tailpiece, and um, when my grandmother passed uh, a couple of years ago now, um, we had to go clean her house out, and uh, I came across the bridge, or the tailpiece, rather. And I said, well, that's going back on. And yeah. uh, we we locked it down, so it's just pretty much stopped now. Yeah. yeah sounds great. Do you use the Veritone at all? No. It yeah. looks cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. That's great. OK, let's uh, let's look at another one. Yeah, let's keep it going. Everybody needs a good Strat in their arsenal. Oh, and, uh, gotta. This one, courtesy of the kind folks at uh, Carter Vintage, for all your vintage guitar needs, <laughs> Carter Vintage Guitars. Um, so this one, I found it over there. It's a 62, and the neck on it's just sweet, sweet as pie. And it was like orange. Somebody re-finished re uh, it like a burnt orange color. Really? Which I wasn't really feeling. Yeah. And my dad's got a 64 Strat that's yellowed and smoky and just all the good stuff. Yeah. So I sent it down to my good friend, Matt Hughes at Banker Guitars and asked him if he could finish it. I sent him my dad's Strat and this one and uh, he just made it look identical. Mm -hmm. It's just a really good, you know, paint job. Uh, yeah, that looks great. Yeah, but great Strat. All right, see, we updated that. We did have a little gaff tape on it. Oh, so is it a three-way? <laughs> is it a three? It's a five-way. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I knocked it off like the first week having it. <laughs> that happens. So uh, while I have it, I guess it's a good guitar to do it with. Yeah. I'll t take you through my pedals. Sure. <laughs> So I got yes. an MXR boost right here. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. So you don't. So that. So you're just running quarter inch straight into looks like a Dunlop uh, volume. Is that right? Yeah, and I, I don't have much use for the volume other than just killing the signal when I need to. Sure. Uh, yeah, and it goes to your tuner too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then so from there you're going into the MXR booster. Yeah, booster here. Um, which we just put back on the board. It's just really great if you just need that little extra leap to get you where you're going. Uh, just a, basically a clean boost to just boost the signal entirely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and it seems like it gives you a little like mid-range punch or it does, something yeah. there that. Absolutely. Um, what else we got here? So, Tube Screamer, it's like a safety blanket. It's, it's my security blanket. <laughs> I never leave the house without one. Um, yeah. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, that bridge pickup really squawks. Man. Yeah. Um, so, Tube Screamer. Can't go wrong. It's just TS9 right off the shelf. Uh, you can get it at your local music store. <laughs> um, what else I got on there? So I got my Echoplex. My actual Echoplex is uh, somewhere in Nashville. I don't know where I left that. Oh, so missing need, gear. Yeah. I need to find that. It'll show up <laughs> or it, it won't. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's in a storage locker somewhere, but uh, it was getting repaired last mm -hmm. I heard. But I got this little Echoplex, and it's great, you know, when we do songs like uh, Beautiful Stranger. Uh, you know, just get to... Yeah, 
that sounds great. So do yeah. you always keep it on that kind of slap sound? Yeah, I keep it just a little yeah. slappy. And like when I'm using an Echoplex, like the real one, I usually use it just to make it sound crazy. Sure, yeah. Because I mean, every now and again, we just like, we just like to go fully avant-garde and just let, you know, have a musical soundscape, <clears throat> which brings me to my next pedal. Yeah. Um, so a couple of years ago, I was playing uh, like a backyard event and uh, this kid let me use his pedal board and um, he had like pre-settings like uh, laminated and labeled on the pedal board for like what sound he wanted to go and one pedal just said space. <laughs> I was like, well, I gotta have some of that. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna do, but basically what he had done, he had just taken a reverb pedal and just cranked it all the way to 10. And uh, so that's what I do with that. Cause I mean, I've got reverb, uh, I got a reverb tank on one of these oranges and I've also got the reverb tank in the, you know, GFL. So I don't really need like actual reverb. So I just use it for this kind of effect here. Just want to get wow. weird. We just so, like to get weird. So that's just the MXR uh, verb. That's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, out of good. context, it's a little strange, but I mean, we're all a little strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what I loved about seeing like those Carter videos of you in that three piece. It was like it got so far out there yeah. in that little in store jam. I love we that. Had, we had a good time doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we were the first like live band in there yeah because all because i've seen you do do like acoustic things or or things just duo things yeah there as well but right. to hear it in hear your full band or your three-piece in full flight that was yeah. great man yeah man jack ryan my drummer and stephen campbell they're two of the baddest mothers walking the face of the earth so <laughs> when you got them behind you i mean it's really you can't go wrong man. Yeah. Yeah, that is a that is a deep pocket, man. Yeah. What else we got on here? So this tremolo is really great. Yeah, um, who makes that? So I was first, you know, I'm a window shopper. I mean, like a lot of us, I saw this pedal. I was like, well, that is beautiful. Uh, the first pedal I saw of his was just this big orange soapbox. He calls it the color driver. Um, and um, he bases all of these off of like actual pedals from the 60s and they just have that really great mid-century look to them, and yeah. um, the color driver's not on right now. I actually replaced this with the the Two Face, which is a uh, it's called a Two Face because it's got a '69 Fuzz Face and a '70 version of the Fuzz Face, so you kind of can switch between the two of them. And that's the same same yeah. builder, same builder, True Fire at okay. a main area. Our boy Teddy. <laughs> Let's get yeah. that some more fuzz. Oh yeah, that sounds great. 69, When you gotta take it to Baker Street, baby, yeah. you gotta use True Fire. <laughs> That's uh, great. But I mean, hell, just just a great pedal, dude. Huh? Is that the Dunlop Rotovibe? Yep, that sure is, man. I got all Dunlop and True Fi and the Tube Screamer. Oh, that's but, great. <clears throat> yeah, this uh, Rotovibe is killer, man. I love it. And uh, the yeah, MXR that's... Phase 100, the newer version of it. And 
only thing I could tell different about it is the the light indicator, which is fun to have, because uh, before there was only one way to really find out if your face better was on. <laughs> yeah. Yep, she's on. But um, yeah, yeah, great pedal. Got some Good. tremolo from True Fire. God, that sounds great. Yeah. Last thing I got my Schofield in a box, just a MXR chorus pedal. And, uh, Schofield always did have like that high intensity of that. It's yeah. Such a. It's a really cool sound. I mean, yeah. it's like a Leslie, but it's a, yeah. it's a little different, a little, you know. Yeah, you see it played with Miles with that crazy tone behind yeah. it. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's so yeah, him. Yeah. Man, man are, those, are those the original pickups in there? Uh, the bridge pickup is. Because it's not like 60 cycle buzzy at all. I mean. Yeah, no. I mean, considering how loud you are, it's like. I am very loud. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, like borderline bottom also loud yeah. in, this, in this. He's a loud dude. Yeah. 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 yeah, you could hear that rig from outer space. And this is loud too. So. Which is a good segue to your amps. So you yeah. have your new signature Marks King amps. Tell me about these. Man, so Orange had this idea to do an amp. And uh, you know, they got all these MK series amps. Yeah. So I just I was just kind of being smart aleck. I said it's called the MK Ultra. Marcus King Ultra, which <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that was a that was a uh, top secret um, acid test basically <laughs> yeah they were testing acid on people unknowingly and <laughs> it's not really cool i don't stand for that but uh, <laughs> mk ultra just sounded like a real cool name for amp so yeah there you it got is. it and uh i begged them for like a year to do a slanted eight by ten cabinet oh i love the that. old marshals yeah and, uh, to which they said no no and then yes huh. and here they are and uh drew's actually rocking the same rig over there and he's also got two 412s but uh, in the middle, I've got this basement cabinet, and I took the back off of it, and just, it screams. And uh, that head, we actually took the, uh, the output, or what is it, uh, power transformer from a brown face uh, twin. Yeah. And our friends at Carter Vintage Guitars actually <laughs> did that. Uh, Zach, the amp Zach. guy over there. He put, Zach's the guy. Yeah, he popped that in there. So it's just got a lot, whole lot of output on it. Um, and uh, and you're running the, those two. You know, one of yours. Running and, all three. Yeah. Oh, run all three. Okay. Yeah, all three at all times. God, that's great. Just uh, why not? Yeah, more is more. Yeah. Huh. And the Cadillac emblems, uh, Cody Ray Bates put those on. That's a custom <laughs> job there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like that your amp has three knobs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, volume just bass trouble just turn it up and go yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's great because you i mean too many options you can kind of you can tweak your way out of a tone yes you can yeah that's yes you great. can uh they still got the hieroglyphics on there man but I, 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 yeah yeah I, right i said look i just want a real self-explanatory amp yeah and man they just really nailed it this is just such a beautiful amp and it sounds so good and it's simple like you said yeah this is a meat and potatoes American-made amplifier with, uh, you know, that classy British flavor. So. Yeah, I love that. And what, what speakers are you running? Uh, vintage 30s. Oh, great. Yes, sir. Yeah. Eight, eight tens. Eight tens, yeah. God, that is pushing some air. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, well, what's not to love? Because yeah. I've always liked this combination of the tens and the 15s. Yeah. And I used to, I used to have two 15s that I would use for, like, you know, kind of the Marshall yeah. orange sound, and then I would use a super reverb. Yeah. I think last time we spoke, I had my super out. Yeah. Um, but then I kind of flop, flipped that on its head, and now I'm using the, the, the Fender reverb 
with the 215s and got the 10s pushing kind of the more rocking sound. So. Yeah, God, that's it. What well, sounds amazing, man. Just it's a great combination, and it's a good looking spread. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the dream. That's what you got to do, man. I just like it to look like a department store window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, man. Hey, did you, and you had a couple of acoustic guitars here, right? I did, yeah. Can we see one of those? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. So what we have here, um, it's courtesy of uh, Mr. Zach Brown. Uh, me and Zach worked together on his record. We wrote a tune, and um, this is probably the best thank you present I've ever gotten from anybody. <laughs> wow. Um, he gave this to me as a gift because I didn't have a big sounding Martin, and uh, he just figured I really needed one in my arsenal. And um, so, what what year is that? So this is a '39 Shade Top D18. God. So they, they made so few sunbursts back then. I mean, that's as rare as it gets. Yeah, man. I mean, we were saying this off camera, like you don't even need a microphone. In yeah. this In this room with this guitar, it's just uh, yeah. This right room, right, man. This room was made for that guitar. Yeah. I mean, it really was. Right. That's great. Rings like a bell. Love oh it. man, Love that's it. fabulous. Yeah. Okay, before I know we gotta get out of here because you've got stuff, show stuff, but can we yeah. look at just your signature guitar? And yeah, then... man, I'd love to show you. Yeah. Yes, sir. So thanks, bud. Alright. So lastly we got um now this is the first uh, the first signature that they made and to my knowledge it's the only one that they did in uh, the Memphis factory and this is my favorite one man it's the first one Jim Lillard hand delivered this to me uh, hell of a guy hell of a builder and I've got this jacket that like just <laughs> melted onto the guitar I guess I don't know. Uh, that's, so that's pretty cool patina yeah. and uh, my buddy Rob Winchester out of Atlanta did this uh, artwork on the pit guard and that's one of my tattoos just wanted to give it a little you know because you got uh, your signature guitar going out there you want yours to look a little different in a lineup and uh, this one's just really special to me man as soon as I got it uh, I left and went and played a gig with it that night straight out of the box I didn't I didn't even fool with it it's just been right ever since and that's uh, great yeah do you, do you know what kind of pickups they put in it Man, I don't remember, yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, the closest thing. Oh, I'm doing the thing. We were talking about that. Whenever you're talking about pickups, <laughs> yeah, I just noticed I was doing it too. But um, yeah, um, just the closest they had to PAFs. Yeah. And um, it's embarrassing I don't remember, but they sound great. That's, that's, great. that's the most important part, right? Well, why don't you play us off in this thing? We'll just say yeah. goodbye to the good people out there and around the world, the guitar nerds. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, big Marcus. thank you to Elixir Strings, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Before I rush rush off, yeah, what? So you're running Elixirs? What what gauge? Eleven to forty nine. Okay. Yeah. Good. There's a Polyweb. Yeah. Okay. Uh, picks. Uh, Dunlop Jazz Threes. <laughs> slides. Uh, so I actually used the Drew Smithers slide. It's a great slide bar, and you can get it at Carter Vintage Guitars. Okay, yeah. And where do you buy guitars? <laughs> Carter Vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Marcus. <laughs>